Okay, now let's see how to tell R that we're actually using time series data. Well, in principle, you don't have to do that, but it'll make future calculations much easier. So assume that we have our data in two CSV files. One CSV file for yearly data and one file for monthly data. And before we read in our data, we have to make sure that we've loaded the necessary package. And the zoo package is actually pretty neat when it comes to time series data. So first we have to load the zoo package. And I assume that you've installed the zoo package. If not, just click on tools and install packages. And then you just install the zoo package. Okay, so I assume you've done that. Let's load the zoo package. So you put in li oops, library, open the parentheses, and then you put in zoo. This should load the zoo package. Okay, now we read in our first data file. So first of all, we create a data frame for our yearly data. So first of all, we're reading in yearly data, assignment operator, and it is a CSV file. So you are already familiar with that. Read.csv, open the parentheses, quotation marks, then you put in the path of your uh, uh, file, and I just paste that. Okay, and it created the data, uh, data frame. Um, now let's have a look at my data. So you put in view, open the parentheses, your data. All right, and uh, as you can see, I have three variables. One variable is called year, and it indicates the year of every observation. Now remember that in contrast to cross-sectional data, we observe the same entity over time, and the entity in my example is the United States of America, because the second variable is the wage and uh, or the index number of wages in manufacturing in the United States. The third variable is the number of economic historians in the United States. So you can see our entity is the United States and our observations are um, years. Okay. Okay, now we have to tell R that we are dealing with time series data. When we declare a time series, we put it into a special variable. And what I like to do is I just take the name of the variable I want to declare as a time series variable. So let's take wage for example and put a TS behind it for time series. Then I put in the assignment operator, and then you put in zoo. This is the function for declaring a time series. Open the parentheses, and now you put in the um, um, data frame's name, okay? I will explain why I did that. So year data dollar sign, and then you put in the name of the variable, so wage. After that, you put in a comma, and then you do the same thing for the time variable. So you put in the data frame's name, year data, dollar sign, and my um, uh, time variable is year. So I put in year. Okay, now you hit enter, and that should create the time series variable. Um, now, note how I put the name of my data frame and a dollar sign in front of my variable. So in front of... The wage variable, there's a year data dollar wage, and in front of the year variable, there's the data frame and a dollar sign. <coughs> Sorry. Um, as you may have noticed, I did not attach my data. I did this because I will also use another data set. And this is the nice thing about R, you can actually work with several data sets at the same time in R. So if you do so, if you, if you do work with several data sets and you do not attach your data, make sure to put the name of the data frame with a dollar sign at the beginning of every variable. Okay? Okay, so um, by the way, I have no idea why the function is called uh, zoo. Anyhow, you open up the parentheses and the very first thing you put in there is variable, the, or the variable you wish to see as a time series variable. Yeah. Then you put in a comma, and then you put in the uh, time variable. This is how you declare a time series. Okay, this is pretty straightforward when it comes to yearly data. So uh, we do the same for other for the other variable as well. So let's do the same for the number of economic historians. So let's call the time series variable hist ts ts for time series assignment operator zoo for declaring a time series variable open up the parentheses so year data the name of the data frame dollar sign and now we take hist as the variable we want to declare as a time series comma year data the name of the data frame 
dollar sign and now we put in the name of the time variable and the time variable is year hit enter and that should do the trick now if your data is uh, measured on a yearly basis you got to be careful when it comes to your time variable okay um, because if you have monthly data things get a bit more complicated and we'll we'll cover that Okay, now um, let's let's take let's take a look at the uh, time series plot of uh, the wage variable. So you would put in plot, open up the parentheses, and then you put in the name of your time series variable. And the time series or the the name of the time series variable, variable for the wage variable is wage ts, right? Hit enter, and it brings up a nice little um, graph over here. Okay. So just treat this variable, this time series variable, just as a normal variable, okay? Um, however, R is pretty clever and will always treat it as a time series variable. If you would put in, you see, if you would put in plot, open up the parentheses and just, oops, sorry, year data dollar sign wage, so the normal variable, look what happens, right? So since it's since wage ts is time a time series variable it will make a line graph if you plot the wage variable it does not know whether it's time series data or not so it will plot these little uh, dots on, on your uh, scatter plot okay and it as i said it has a lot of advantages when you do your data analysis okay um also if you take a look at your variable um it, it shows you that the, that the date for every single value. So what do I mean by that? So let's take a look at wage ts. So we look at the variable and look over there. You have the value and you have the corresponding year. So that is pretty neat, right? If you would put in a year data wage, so the normal variable, what will happen is there's no corresponding year in there. Okay, so this, this is pretty good. Okay, so this was pretty easy. And you can also directly compare both variables. So if you want to compare both variables, so wages and the number of historians, you just put in plot, open up the parentheses, and now you put in C bind, so another command, open up the parentheses again, and then you put in the name of both time series variables. So wage ts, comma, hist ts. And look what happens. This looks pretty neat, right? So it gives you a plot for both time series variables at the same time. Okay, now how do you put in monthly data? Well, I always save my monthly data as follows. I put in the year, then I hash, and then I put in the two digits month, month code. So for example, how would I code January 1955? I would put in 1955, hash, 05. So this would be, uh, sorry, not January, uh, this would be May 1955. Sorry, this is how I would code May 1955. Okay. Now, um, let's read in my monthly data. So what do we do? Let's create a data frame. Let's call it month date, uh, month data, sorry. Assignment operator. It's a CSV file. So you put in read.csv. Open up the parentheses, quotation marks the path of your file and it's not called year data.csv it's month data.csv and it created the data frame now let's view my data okay so view month data let's have a look okay so this is my data and um as you can see, um, t take t or take the I take a look at the name of my date variable. It's called y y y y m m. Uh, I did not put a hash between y y y y and m m because otherwise I wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, however, um, I did code my time variable this way. So I put in the four digits code for year, then a hash, and then a two digits code for month. Okay, this is how I coded my my data. Now, you can call the, the time variable any way you like, but you should be consistent when it comes to coding your um, time variable. This, this is the important part. Okay, so before we declare time series, we need to tell R how to interpret the, um, 
the this date the state format right there okay so what we have to do is define a new variable we have to define a date variable because all that is is just an i would guess a numeric no not a numeric a in, in, in uh, a character variable for r this is just a normal variable for it doesn't know that it is a, a date yet okay so we got to tell or we got to create a date variable so let's call the date variable y y y y m m so in principle, I'm overriding this variable. Well, I'm not technically overriding it, but let, let's just give it the same name, okay? So in order to avoid, avoid confusion. Assignment operator, and then you put in the function it, s dot your mon. So it tells R that whatever is inside this parentheses, it, it is a, um, a date file, is a, a date variable for monthly data. And now we put in our date variable in our data frame. So month data dollar sign y y y y y m m comma. And now we gotta declare how we've coded our uh, date um, variable. Okay, so how did I code my date variable? Well, first of all, you gotta put in quotation marks. Then you put in the percentage sign and a um, capital letter Y, because it is a four digits code for a year, okay? Then you put in a hash, then you put in a percentage sign again, and a small letter M, because we are using a two digits month code. So this is how I tell our act, first of all, by using the, the function as here, mon, I tell, I tell R, okay, listen up, this right here, oops, sorry, this right here is a um, monthly date variable. And this is how I've coded the, 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 the monthly date variable. Hit enter, and it created a, a date uh, variable. Now, I didn't technically override it because th this variable still exists in the original data, fr uh, data uh, frame, However, I created a variable directly in R that just bears the same name, okay? So this is pretty nice because when I declare my time series data, I don't have to put uh, in the uh, data frame's name before the variable because this is now a variable inside of R. Okay, now let's create a time series for unemp. Uh, and by the way, this is real data. This is monthly data on the number of unemployed persons in Germany um, from January 1962 to uh, December 1978. Okay, so this is this is real data. Okay, so let's declare a time series variable for the number of unemployed people. So let's call it unemp ts. So basically just the same assignment operator. And again, you would put in the zoo function, open up the parentheses. And now you got to put in the name of the variable. So this time our data frame is month data. You see, this is this is why I put in the name of the data frame with a dollar sign before the variable because I'm now using another data frame. Before that, I was using the year data data frame, and now I'm using the month data data frame. So I did not attach any data frames. So month data dollar sign, and then you put in the name of the variable on amp. And now you put in a comma. And since I've created a time variable inside of R by this function above, by this function right here, I don't have to put in the name of the data frame because I'm using the variable inside of R. So you just put in y, 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 m, m. Okay. You hit enter. And then it created the time series variable. Okay. So let's have a look at the plot of the data. So plot on amp ts okay that looks pretty nice this is the unemployment data um you can see some seasonal fluctuations right there um and let's have a look at the variable on amp ts and you can see that you not only have the value for every um uh, for the variable but also the month and the corresponding year. So this is pretty nice, right? So this is a nice table over there. Uh, you can look at your data 
and that is very very convenient so this is basically how you read in time series data um there are many other ways how to code your data or uh, your date um variable and just make sure that you read the r cookbook and it's it's pretty explicit about that so that will that would help okay